So you want to know about RIT dorm life. This is the ultimate RIT dorm survival guide. But you're probably wondering, how am I going to make this video if I'm not in a dorm? And to that I say, you're right, but I have lived in one for a semester, so uh, let's do this. Alright, so in this video, I'm probably I'm mostly going to be covering the double dorm, which is what most freshmen live in. So there's two types of double dorms. You have your square and then there's a rectangle. The square, I believe, is 12 by 14. And then the rectangle is 18 by 10. Squares are usually in low-rise buildings. So all the res halls, so A, B, and C. So you'll find mostly squares in those. And then in the high-rise buildings like Ellingson and Gleason, then you'll find more rectangle type buildings. So you're probably wondering, what's in my dorm? And I got you, I got you covered. Before I left, I took a bunch of videos and pictures of what's in my dorm and like what's there because I was moving out, so. Every dorm has a, a bed. Yeah, use that, go to sleep. Don't be the typical college student and like sleep for two hours. You get a desk as well too, which also has a power strip on it. If you want, you can also bring a power strip too because that also helps. You're also gonna get a micro fridge, which is a microwave and a fridge combined. But I saw that and I was like, yo, this is like crazy. In addition to that, you get two large chests and then you get one smaller one. So you can pretty much configure it to your liking, to whatever works. I put both of my large ones under my bed and then I put my smaller one in my closet space. Also the rooms get a waste bin and a recycling bin as well too. So yeah, what should I bring? So I packed the light and then ended up getting more stuff as I moved on campus because I live five hours away. So it helped me out in the drive there. I would stick to the necessities. So bring at least two towels, two bed coverings and pillow coverings, a shower caddy, all your toiletries as well too, and your supply of clothes and shoes. Uh, that helps as well. Another thing that's really important that you should bring are uh, these. Cause like, if you're living in a dorm, you're gonna have communal bathrooms and like, you don't wanna be putting your bare feet on the stuff everyone's been on. Just bring them, bro, they're, they're mad cheap. You can get them for like $5, or you could get some like Gucci flip flops for like, I don't know how much they are, but I don't know if your future you could do that. Sensational. <laughs> On top of that, it would help if you brought a long phone charger because you know like when you're charging your phone and like you gotta wait for it to get a like certain percentage just so you can roll over. If you bring a long one, you won't have to deal with that. And it helps if you're like plug it in by your wall and you're sitting at your desk. It's it's a big help too. Uh, you should also bring your school supplies, although most stuff might be remote now. I'd prefer to still have paper on. I know like for my Cal classes, we would write our work down and then submit it. So having at least a couple notebooks and some pencils and some binders would help as well too. And a printer. So you don't really need one since the school has a plethora of printers available to your disposal. And you can pr easily reload that with your Tiger Bucks account. But if you really want to, you can, but it's not really a necessity. It's like, I have a printer, a fan. But some of the older buildings don't have AC. <laughs> this was kind of tragic when I moved in because my roommate and I thought we had a building with AC. So a fan would be pretty important. Like, AC is not that big of a deal up there because it's only hot for like a couple weeks because it's Rochester. It helps to have one, and if you're living in a non-air conditioned building, it's like, bring, it, bring a fan, bro, bring a fan. Lastly, my biggest thing that helped me a lot was my Brita. Like, yo, I got one of them like giant like Brita thingies, and I just left it in my cubby, and I'd fill it up like once a week, and I'd, I wouldn't have to drink like tap water and it saves you on money too because you're not constantly buying bottled water because you have a Brita so you can just go to the lounge fill it up bring it in your dorm and you're chilling or you can put it in your micro fridge if you want but I don't know I drink room temperature water am I weird I don't, I don't know I don't know also personal items so you don't want it to feel like a prison where it's just school 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 24 7 and I kind of like 
didn't do this as much but coming back for next semester i'm definitely going to do that but uh bring stuff i personally prioritize my computer setup because i do make a lot of music on this side so and do graphic design content so like i wanted to make it so it was like straight productive a uh, place that I could get all my work done and it looked kind of cool too. I also had a projector which was like kind of cool so my roommate and I could watch movies and like chill and stuff so it was, it was lit. Dorm side food. What am I gonna eat? We're all humans. We gotta eat. So boom if you're living on like I call it like so we have dorm side right? If you like split it up it was like the top so like the north side of dorm side and like the south side so the south is side like if you're looking at it on a map the south is bottom of side of dorm side is where most of the res halls are and grace watson hall as well too so that's where you're gonna find gracie's and beans but since i lived there i was uh, eating at gracie's and beans if i didn't want to like travel across campus to go somewhere but there's a lot of other options on campus too that you could get food from also and if you're on like the north side of campus then you have options like commons which is pretty good it's a nice dining and then you also have the college grind as well but uh the college grind and beans are like coffee-esque type shops like bougie you know you get smoothie and like blueberry muffin i used to get that a lot it was good what's in my building we all have a bathroom and you have a lounge area as well too and on top of that every building also has a laundry room as well so you can do your laundry yeah so the laundry rooms you're primarily going to find in the basement levels which is pretty cool because guess what the basements are connected to the tunnels and the tunnels are like mad chill like it's like a whole interconnected like network it's so cool and if you don't want to go outside to go somewhere you can just go through the tunnels not every resident hall or building or is connected to the tunnels like there's academic tunnels and then there's like dorm tunnels so like be weary of that like i lived in rest hall a and i thought i could go over see my friends in a different building just through our tunnels but they weren't connected so you just got to be a bit careful of that but another cool thing about the tunnels is how they also have like vending machines in them and there's also stores there too. So you have Souls Underground which was closed for my first semester because of uh... And on top of that you also have the corner store. In these tunnels you're also gonna find the post office. So this is where you pick up all your mails and whatnot. Anytime you do get a package or anything, you're gonna get an email. Buildings also have different types of floors as well too. So I unfortunately lived in an all male building, so I wasn't really able to experience the fullest extent of this. But there are all, like every building is different. There's like different caveats to it. It's, it's chill. By this I mean there's different kind of living arrangements on every floor, depending on the building. So there's same gender floors or co-ed floors. So if that's what you're interested in, buildings have that available too. And then there's also mainstream floors as well too. Since RIT is home for the National Technical Deaf Institute, there's a mixture of hearing and hard of hearing kids as well too. So mainstream floors, bring them all together and y'all can like meet and be cool pick up a little asl on the time too in total i believe there's around 13 plus buildings that you can live in a couple of those buildings are high-rise buildings so i know gleason ellingson seoul and nrh are all high-rises so if you want like a view of the campus i mean you can live in one of those so yeah i lived in a low rise so yeah i didn't have to travel as far to go sleep after a long day of classes which is cool but i mean to each his own do what excites there's also on another side of the campus the rit inn which is kind of like a hotel type thing it's kind of cool i had a couple friends that lived over there they liked it it's a bit farther from everything else but if you want to live in something more like comfortable i mean you can live there it's pretty cool i think it's cool but one big important thing is the quarter mile so this is like the long quarter mile because it's not actually a quarter mile that connects the dorm side to the academic side so if you're looking for a building that is closer to the academic side so you don't have to like walk more in the morning it's only like an extra like three to five minutes 
try and find a building that's closer on the line to the quarter mile if you like pull up a map of campus it's easier to find that all out there's actually a handy dandy website that's been put together detailing all like the caveats of every building it kind of like depicts like everything like the, i mean the face value things you want to know about the buildings on top of that we have special interest housing so this is kind of cool i didn't know much about this going in but like researching for this video i i learned a lot more about them so there's i believe seven you have computer science house art house engineering house unity house international house photo house and the house of general sciences the main function of them is to keep you in an environment with like-minded individuals say you're very passionate about the arts and you want to be around people like that art house would be a great place for you the thing is there is an application process to get into these uh uh, special interest housings. I believe you have to write an essay for them But if you do get approved then you can live with a bunch of like-minded people, which I mean I find pretty cool I mean. Last but not least roommates pro tip Communication is key if you can't talk to your roommate or don't feel comfortable around them Why live with them, but yeah, there's always a Facebook group around every year that you can put your info on and find people and chat with them and see if they would like to act, potentially live with them be considered also because this is the person you're going to be spending a lot of your living time around with so uh try to be mindful and be considerate but also have fun too like you don't want to be like completely alienated because that's not fun yeah so that's pretty much it so if you pretty much use all of this information to your advantage you should pretty much have a successful dorm life and freshman year so i hope that helped and thanks for watching